Hello, I'm Kindo, and welcome to another Title Cycles video tutorial. Today, we will continue our discussion about Title MIDI by creating a custom synth mapping so that you can send MIDI control change messages from title code to your synthesizer. Hope you enjoy. Greetings. This is Title MIDI Tutorial Part 2, where we are going to create custom MIDI control change mappings for a external synthesizer. So I've got my Korg mini log here. And in this tutorial, I'm going to wire up some custom control change mappings in title code so that I can control those features from code. So I've got things like filter cutoff. Well, down here in my pattern, you can see I've got uh, filter cutoff the uh, noise amount, and this thing called cross mod. Um, these last two are um, parameters that are not really available in title, so we have to create these. And cutoff is something that does exist, exist in title, and we need to map that to the, the mini log. So that's the goal. Here on line 10, by the way, this is all code that I covered in the first tutorial, how to wire up your synth and so on. Um, but I've got a custom thing called a mini log controller. That's what we're going to build and put that on MIDI channel 15 and have it listen on this device. So um, I've got a little cheat sheet agenda here. Um, so we're good. I'm just going to dive into it. Um, first, we need to create a package. So maybe one caveat. Uh, I, the only way I am really comfortable with creating a synth mapping in title is to create a Cabal Haskell package that you install in your system, and then it's available to be used in your editor. There may be another way to do it without creating a Cabal package, but if there is, I don't, I don't know what it is. And I, I've tried a few other ways, and my, my Haskell skills are just not good enough to, to, to know what I would need to do. So... Um, with me not really being a Haskell programmer, and what my goal is to show you the fastest way to get your synth working in Title, I'm going to start with this standalone package. And we're going to create a Cabal package locally that you can install on your system and then have it be available. It's not going to be public. It's not going to be something you're going to publish unless you want to. Um, but I'll talk about how to contribute your package to the main Title MIDI repository if you choose. I'll save that for the end. So, so let's get into that. Um, I've got my terminal here with an empty directory. And just like, well, yeah, just like we've used Cabal to install or find packages, you can do init to initiate a new Cabal package. So I will do that. And what this will do is it, it guides you through... Um, some metadata about your package that you want to create. So I want my package to be named mini log. And a lot of these I can just accept the default values. It's fine. So version, uh, license, I'll choose MIT, name, email, homepage, synopsis, category. Um, I do have to pick an option for the build, whether it's a library or executable. I'm going to choose library, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to delete the code that gets generated anyway. And source directory, just choose none. Haskell 2010. No informative comments. Okay. So what it's generated for me is a change log, a license, a cabal file, and a Haskell file. I'm going to delete the Haskell file right away because we're going to replace it with our own code. And, okay, so let's go back to my editor. So these files now appear in my editor. Uh, and I'm using Atom, by the way. You could use whatever a uh, editor you choose. So let's look at the Cabal file that it, it uh, generated here. So it has all of the answers I supplied now show up. And we need to make a few modifications to this. Uh, the first being this build depends. This is not complete enough. We are going to depend on other stuff in order for our package to get built properly. So we also need to depend on title. 
title dash MIDI. And I, th I think that's it actually. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. We're going to add something to this exposed module section in, in a little bit, but uh, that's all we need to do. So in, in the build depends, make sure you add title and title MIDI so that those things get imported when Cabal tries to build what we create. Next, we are going to create a mini log .hs file. So this is going to be the source code for our mini log controller. And we basically need to define our, our module here. So module mini log where, and this is just defining that we are creating a module called mini log. And we need to import a few things, import title. Oh, I gotta look at my cheat sheet here. Uh, import sound.title.params and import sound.title.midi.control. So these are these two import statements allow us to use some uh, title MIDI things, uh, specifically the base controller. I, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but the the kind of the base functionality that our controller is going to use, and then uh, the parameters, things like cutoff, we need are, are defined in parameters, and the ability ability to create custom parameters. We we need something that's we need stuff that's in this sound .title params for that. Next, we uh, define our mini log controller. And I'm going to use the word inherits. I don't know if that's the right word, but um, we're going to inherit from this thing called controller shape, which is really going to give us the base functionality that we want our controller to have. And then last, well, not last, mini log. Uh, controller equals controller shape and then inside curly braces here controls equals and then we can spe specify just an empty list for now and latency and latency is something you're going to want to care about if you are going to be using your MIDI synth with uh, super dirt or classic dirt and you'll need to adjust this latency value in order to get your patterns to line up. I'll just leave it at uh, one tenth of a second for right now. And last, we need to call this two shape mini log controller. And we're done. So when this package gets built, it's going to evaluate all of this code, compile all of this code, and it will then expose your mini log controller to be used in your editor. Again, I'm not a Haskell programmer. So I can't explain exactly what all these steps are. That's okay. I'm trying to just get, get you going as fast as possible. So later on, when we wire up our parameters, we're going to put that stuff in controls here. But we're going to stop here and just try and compile this and make sure it works. So, oh, oh, oh. But first, go back to our Cabal file. Um, we need to uncomment this exposed modules section. So get rid of the two dashes and then type mini log for uh, which is the module that we defined here in our HS file. Okay. Now we should be able to install this package on our local system. So here's our source code and we just type cabal install. And if we're lucky, it will compile and it compiled and it installed. Great. Okay. So now we can actually test it. So it doesn't use any custom uh, control change parameters yet, but we're going to get there. So let's go back to our uh, end code that we want to use here. So I now have this import mini log statement. So in addition to importing this sound.title.context and sound.title.midi.stream, uh, to uh, create MIDI patterns with, I need to also import mini, the mini log module itself that's installed. So now I can boot up title and evaluate these three lines. And wire up the devices. And now here's the moment of truth. We just wired up the mini log controller on that port. And now we should be able to 
at least play this line 12 here and play a pattern on the synth. Let's see if it works. It does. Okay, so we've now created a custom uh, local package that communicates to my synthesizer uh, as a module named Minilog. Now we can start adding some custom stuff to this. So I'm just going to neaten this up here. Uh, okay, so now we need to start wiring up our cutoff and noise and the cross mod. I'm going to start with cutoff because that's already a parameter that's defined. So it's pretty easy. Um, so I'm just going to refer to the documentation. So the mini log cutoff, let me just type this in here. So on the mini log, the filter cutoff is MIDI control change number 11. The noise is, is one. And the cross mod is MIDI control change. What is that? That's on nine. Okay, so I'm just taking an inventory of values here. The filter cutoff is already a parameter defined in uh, in the main title library. So we don't need to create a custom definition of what a filter cutoff means. We can just reuse that. Um, so to do that, all we need to do is in this controls list here is wire it up using this MIDI CC function. I think uh, cutoff P. So cutoff P is a title parameter that's defined in this title sound title params. Uh, and then the number. So in this case, it's 11. And that's it. Now we've wired up the cutoff MIDI control change or the cutoff title parameter to MIDI control change value 11 on this particular synth. So that's all the, all the modifications I'm going, to, I'm going to make here. Let's go back to our terminal and we'll reinstall, Cabal install. And now we need to go back to our editor and reload our editor. In this case, uh, I'm using Atom, but I need to restart Atom so that it reloads the new version of the uh, Minilog module. Okay, so now we'll reboot all this stuff, start our pattern. So I'm just gonna play the, the one line here. Oh, oh, hold on a sec. All right, so now we should be able to add this cutoff parameter into that. Oops. And let's see if it works. Sounds like it's working. And I should be able to use something like a sign function. All right, so that works. Uh, now, just to show that I have not implemented those other things yet, I should have done this earlier. If I try and use the noise or cross mod parameters with this, I should get an error. Yeah, so down in the, the bottom of the output of the Atom editor, I can see that those things are not defined yet. So let's do that next. We'll go back to our controller. And now we need to wire this stuff up so we can follow the same pattern. Oh, but, but we don't have a noise parameter that's defined anywhere. Again, cutoff underscore P is defined in this params thing we imported, but there is no noise parameter we can import. So we have to define that ourselves, ourselves. So to do that, just in this file here, in this file here, I can define it. I'm going to call it noise 
And again, I'm not a Haskell programmer. I can't tell you why you have to type this exact code, but it's what you need to type to get it to work. <laughs> I feel very dirty and guilty about that, but uh, that's fine. Uh, okay. And then, okay, so, so here is the code you need to type to define a new parameter. So we're creating a parameter called noise. And the parameter um, name we're going to use down below in the controls list is this noise underscore p. And then from uh, the title code that we're going to type later in our pattern, we can just use this noise. Um, we're going to call it noise, but here when we wire it, when we wire it up, it's going to be noise underscore p. This pf I believe means it's a float or a value between zero and one. It's not an integer. So we want the noise value to be uh, either you know, 0 or 0 0.6 or 0 0.3 or 1, but not greater or less than, not greater than 1, not less than 0. Just 0 is the default value. So we are going to default noise to 0. If we wanted a default of uh, you know, half, half the noise, we could say 0 0.5, but we're going to just make it 0. Okay, so now we can wire that up, noise underscore p, and noise is on channel 1, which seems, I'm just going to double check that. Uh, noise. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, I don't, I wouldn't expect it to be a 1, but so be it. Okay, so now we've got noise wired up. Let's go back and cabal install. Uh, by the way, for you non-Haskell programmers out there, if you have an error, like if I type some kind of invalid syntax here and then go back, uh, you'll have any, um, your compile will fail here and you can look, you can debug uh, using this output here. Um, there may be better Haskell development tools out there that prevent you from having to go through that compilation step first, but again, I'm not, I'm not your Haskell guy. I wish I were. Okay, so we've defined our. Let's let's re recompile here since I uh, broke it on purpose. Okay, so everything is compiled. We've reinstalled. Go back to our editor. Reload our editor again. Boot everything up again. Start our pattern. Let's put cut off at one. And now I'm going to add the noise and see if that works. Sounds like it works. All right, cool. Uh, last but not least, let's repeat with cross mod. This will be easy. We can just copy and paste what we did for um, noise. Cross mod and cross mod will be named with the same default value of zero. MCC cross mod P, and that's on control change value nine. Okay. Reinstall. And go back to our editor, reload, and boot everything up again. Uh, I may not have things set quite the way I want for Crossmod to have much of an effect. Anyway, let's let's give it a shot here. See if it does. So it is working, but let me take the noise out. I just want to make sure you can hear this. So let's um, cross mod slow for sign. So now we'll have the cross mod effect fade in and out here. Yep, 
you can kind of think of the cross mod on the mini log as, as kind of a, a detune type of function. It's a little more complex than that, but um, in any case, you can you can hear it working, which is cool. So there, we've now achieved our goal. We've wired up three custom control change mappings to our synth. Two of them were uh, custom parameters we've defined, and we reused one. So I want to show you um, real quick this. When we imported the, the cutoff, that came from this sound.title.params. I want to show you where that's defined in case you want to reuse other parameters. So here we are at the title repository on GitHub, github.com slash title cycles slash title. If you go here in your web browser and then go to sound slash title and then find this params.hs, this is the module that we are importing right here on line three. So in here, we can find the cutoff underscore P parameter that we were using. If you want to find another parameter, if you think, or if you think there may be a parameter you could reuse, like detune, that's in here. Um, release, release, release is in here. Um, you know, pan, pitch, the shape. If you want, you can reuse these parameters for your your custom mappings. So I just wanted to find. Uh, point out that you can go to this file on GitHub and, and find this stuff. You can also uh, see what their default values are, and that's kind of cool. All right, so let's go back to my cheat sheet here. Um, all right, we've done steps one, two, and three. <laughs> that's pretty much it. So the last thing I just want to talk about is how do you add your custom synth to the title MIDI package? It's a little more complex, but it's not too bad. So let's go to the title MIDI repository on GitHub. So, so what this means is to add your custom synth definition, you need to put it in this sound title MIDI folder. So there are already a number of other um, since defined in here and you just need to add it here now how do you do that this is the title midi repository you can't just contribute to that directly so what do you need to do to do that first you need to have a github account and then fork this repository so create a fork clone your fork to your local machine and then put your custom synth definition in this folder however you will not be able to just use it um, you know, I, I just created a simple name here of Minilog, but you will need to follow the exact, um, you'll need to name it according to the folder structure here. So sound.title.midi.minilog would be the, the appropriate way to name it. You can refer to other synthesizers in here for another example. So here I'm in a synth called System1M. And you'll you just notice that the sound.title.midi prefix is here as well. So it has to match this folder structure. And then the synth is basically just defined in the same way. Pretty straightforward. Um, then the last thing you need to do is go to the title MIDI cabal file, add your synth as an exposed module, just add it here. And then uh, commit it to your GitHub repository and do a pull request. So I'm not going to talk about how to do those steps because I guess it's outside the scope of what I want this tutorial to be about. Um, but if you want to contribute, just add your synth definition to this um, uh, in this repository to sound title MIDI, that folder. Uh, make sure you rename it to reflect that folder structure. Again, this uh, sound title MIDI and then your synth name sound.title.midi.synth name. Um, yeah, and then add it to the Cabal file and do a pull request, and it'll get added. So that's how you do that. I know that was a very fast explanation. It wasn't really a hands-on walkthrough, but um, hopefully that, that will shed some light on how to do that. So that is all I wanted to show, how to create your own custom title MIDI mapping. 
Um, please ask questions, leave a comment, go to the live code Slack, uh, and go to the title channel. If you've got questions on this, I'm sure I've missed something, uh, or a particular question somebody might have and, uh, be glad to answer and, and make another tutorial or, or add, um, just try and shed some more light on it. If, if that makes sense. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and see you in the future.